Let's go to the next one, which is importing an invoice. So let me open up an invoice or a list of invoices so we can see what this looks like. So I'm going to make uh, the font a little bit bigger just so we understand what's going on here. So I basically have this spreadsheet uh, where I took a QuickBooks file, another QuickBooks file, and I exported my list of invoices. Okay, I got my invoice dates. I got my invoice numbers. I have my customer name. I have the item that is being invoiced. I have the description, I have the target account, the item points to, I have the class, and I have the dollar amount. So what I do is I'm going to import all of these invoices. And some of these invoices have multiple lines. If you look at this one, for example, this one has like, uh, this one's actually really long. This invoice 1067 has 25 lines. So that one's quite big, perfect example of something that you prefer to import whether uh, rather than entering manually. So we're gonna go ahead and import that uh, that that invoice list. I'm gonna open Transaction uh, Pro Importer. I'm gonna click on Browse. Let me go ahead and save this as a CSV file. You don't have to save it as a CSV file. I like doing it uh, just because it's a, it's a cleaner and faster uh, import. So I'm gonna save it as a CSV file. I'm gonna go ahead and open and select that CSV file. Click on Open and then I'm gonna pick field comma separated csv means comma separated uh file so that means that's always going to be that and then on the import type i'm going to change that over to invoice so i got invoice i'm going to select invoice right there and then on the program options if you remember earlier uh quickbooks created uh those accounts automatically see do not add new accounts so if i had selected do not add new accounts on my previous import uh, that it would have given me an error, right? So something uh, to consider there. So for now, I'm just gonna let it import just so it goes through. So I'm gonna click on next. It gives me a preview of what is look what the file looks like. Again, uh, so you are, are are making sure you're on the right file. Then we click on next. Then it says the same thing. Hey, this mapping is not set up. Can you uh, map this for me? Okay, so let's start. So my customer's name, which is my first line here, the title of uh, this header is called name, right? So I'm gonna map name, this column D name to customer. So I click on the drop down menu and then select name. Then transaction date. Okay, that's gonna be column B, which is just called date. Click on the drop down and click on date. Then we got reference number, which is gonna be invoice number, which this one is called num. So I'm gonna click on the drop down menu and then click on num. And then let's see what else we got here. We got the item name. That's the next one, it's called item. So I'm gonna come down here, come down and go to item, click on the drop down and select item. And then I'm gonna go to description, which is called memo. So I'm gonna select description, which is called memo. And then I have, does it look like I have quantities here? So I'm gonna go straight to a uh, total amount here under credit. So I'm gonna go down to amount Here under price, I'm gonna select credit. And I think that's it. Do I have to bring anything else? Oh, AR account, this is really cool. So if you have multiple accounts, receivable accounts in QuickBooks uh, desktop, you can select which accounts receivable account uh, it belongs to. And it doesn't look like I have anything else. Oh, I got the class, so that's important. Let me bring class over as well, class. And I wanna show you this static formula, how this works. So you can have, data in your spreadsheet missing, but you can force it in there with uh, the static formula. So for example, I'm gonna go down to, um, let's see what else, what, what can I add here? Let's see, we got uh, FOB, service date, let's see memo. Okay, so I'm gonna put here, imported on 12.05.2019 by Hector. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a static formula, and then basically that means whatever I type in there, every single transaction uh, gets that. Let's also do uh, terms. So let me open up an invoice real quick in QuickBooks. Let's see what terms I have here. So I got terms uh, net 60. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type net 60 on the terms, and so everything gets net 60 terms. I'm gonna go into terms. 
and I'll type here net 60. So I hope you can see the difference between using the drop down and picking a field from the spreadsheet versus using a static value or formula. Okay, then I'm gonna click on save as, save my mapping as invoices from PayPal, whatever it is, like whatever I'm getting the information from, I'm gonna save uh, the mapping. So next time I, I pull up that the a similar spreadsheet, I can pull up my uh, my, my mapping. And I'm gonna click on next. And it's processing uh, 52 lines. So, um, so all, none of these customers are in QuickBooks, by the way. So I'm gonna go into uh, customer so you can see. Um, it's actually importing right now. So we, we may see them pop in as it comes in. But if you look at my customer list, my customer list is blank. Once this import comes in, all these customers are going to be created. So it's up to you, right? So do you wanna create the customer or do you wanna force QuickBooks to find uh, the correct customer with TPI? Do you have to uh, play with the spreadsheet to make sure that the item, the customer names match? That's gonna be up to you on, on how you manage that, okay? So notice I have no customers in QuickBooks and once I do the import, all these customers are going to be created automatically. So I'm gonna click on finish, okay? And then we're going to let TPI do its magic. And if you, if you notice on the, on the left-hand side, all these customers are being created on the fly as the invoices are being created as well. All right, let me go ahead and click on OK. So I got a list of all the things that were imported. There's a checkbox that says filter the things that didn't import. I click on the checkbox. It looks like I have no issue, which is great. Love that. Um, so there's no issue import. There was no issues. Everything imported. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on uh, close. And then I'm gonna go into QuickBooks. So check out QuickBooks. I'm gonna go into transactions. Look at, these were all the invoices that were created. Okay, all the invoices were created. I'm gonna click on that one that was really long, uh, 1067 right here. And notice all my 13 lines or whatever it was, everything got imported with descriptions, with classes, check out the terms. The terms came in uh, beautifully. Check out imported on that the text down here in the bottom that came in uh, beautifully. Everything uh, worked out really well. I mean, the, all the fields are available for import. I can pick the due date. I can pick the rep, uh, ship via FOB. All those things would have to be mapped uh, beforehand in order for you to be able to uh, import them. So it's a really quick, easy illustration on how to import uh, invoices uh, using TPI.